Hello, my name is Jerry Henwood and welcome to Let's Talk About It. Today I had the pleasure of interviewing Dottie Katz, who is the founder and CEO of uh, an organization called Matthew's Journey, which is a day center for those with dementia. Welcome, Dottie. Very sure. nice to meet Thank you. Thank you for having me today. Sure. There's such a need in our community and uh, across the world as people yes. live longer and we see more and more people who begin to have symptoms of dementia, which is very hard for them and for their families as well. Now, can you tell us a little bit about how you came to establish Matthew's Journey? Well, um, I think I was getting ready to do that about 35 years ago. I uh, worked in a facility in Louisville, Kentucky, and I was the assistant director of nursing. And the uh, director asked me, she said, could you find out about this disease, Alzheimer's disease? And I was like, what the heck is that? So I went to the University of Louisville Medical uh, Library. I found one book on Alzheimer's disease, and it was written by Dr. Alzheimer. Lots of people don't know that that's what the disease was named after. Mm -hmm. um, he did some research, and as time has gone on, um, I work in long-term care. I'm a director of nursing or a nursing home administrator. And what I found were that the numbers were beginning to rise in terms of residents that we were seeing with Alzheimer's disease. And what I saw also was that we weren't prepared to care for these people. Here we were finding wonderful, wonderful uh, you know, causes of disease, preventions of disease, and treating diseases. So now we're living older, and we have patients coming in to nursing homes. And at first, the type of things that we did with them was orientation therapy. And we would try to reorient them to places where they were or people that they were with. And that didn't seem to be working because they seemed to get very, very frustrated. So we gave that idea up and started uh, doing some research. Um, and we found that it was really important to just keep people where they are, in the moment, what they know. And it really helped with their um, frustration behaviors and different things. As a director of nursing, I um, saw that we weren't prepared in those environments and that oftentimes we had staff that wasn't trained, we had patients that were frustrated, we had staff frustrated and certainly families. So um, I had made up my idea at that point in time that I was going to have a little place that people could come to during the day and that we could relieve their family, the caregivers, from, from the burdens and the frustration that they were having. And that's when I decided about Matthew's journey. I have a son who is a Montessori teacher, and Montessori has taken on a great deal of research using the Montessori method with Alzheimer patients. And I had a wonder, wonderful trip to Prague in 2016 Day one was the Alzheimer Montessori project, and I was hooked. And I knew that there would be a better way to do this, and we better find it pretty quickly. And I decided to start Matthew's journey. And Matthew was named after uh, was named after my son, who I lost 16 years ago, and um, I lost him to a drug overdose. And I knew that his journey was really hard. But I also knew from working with these clients how hard their journey was. You know, when they looked in my eyes and they just, they didn't know what to say or, they, or I knew that they were having a hard time and I wanted to do something for them. So I'm doing this in memory of Matthew and his journey and our dementia patients and their journey. Oh, that's a wonderful story. Thank you for sharing all of that. You're welcome. Now, um... How is Matthew's journey different from other uh, day centers that care for dementia patients? Well, not all of the centers um, would have dementia clients. So they would have a mix of dementia patients and maybe just um, 
clients that need to come in um, so that they have maybe they can have some socialization, uh, make sure they have lunch. But Matthew's journey is very specifically for dementia clients. And I'm going to use the word dementia now because we have Alzheimer dementia, we have Parkinson dementia, we have vascular dementia. So I am using the term dementia as the umbrella for all the dementias that we, we are beginning to find. That's very interesting. I've never heard that before. Mm -hmm. when, when I heard of dementia in the past, uh, I was always wondering, well, what's the difference between Alzheimer's and dementia? And then uh, people would tell me about that. And now you're mentioning dementia as it's related to Parkinson's, yes. as, as it related to vascular. Now, are the behaviors the same that come from the different sources? Well, sometimes what you will find is with, with a Parkinson dementia, sometimes the clients have hallucinations. So you have to be very astute to understand the behaviors that they're exhibiting so that you know how to manage them. Because you wouldn't want to give a patient with an Alzheimer dementia um, medications that you might give a patient with Parkinson's mm -hmm. like dementia. All right. I, in fact, recently I even had a client who had MS and she, she was exhibiting, a young woman, exhibiting um, signs of dementia. So um, you really have to have a good diagnostician who works closely with you um, to help you to decide what kind of dementia do you have and how is it going to be managed. That's very interesting. So uh, given what you just explained, what are the different uh, types of behaviors that people might see from early onset to full blown? Could you just give us a, a little bit of example of the range? Well, they, the Alzheimer's Association says there's seven stages and I'm not gonna go through all of those, mm -hmm. but it starts with you know mild cognitive impairment, medium cognitive impairment. What you'll find when they begin the process, uh, sometimes we say we're having a senior moment, mm -hmm. Um, but sometimes the senior moment is just because we have too many things going on. Um, but when you see that, you begin to see that cognitive impairment, things that they did every day that, that was very comfortable doing, um, they begin to forget maybe where the cups are mm -hmm. in the, the closet, in the cabinets. Um, maybe they can't write out a check. Um, and it's very, very subtle to begin with. And what will happen is you will find that the spouse or the caregiver compensates for that mm -hmm. person. So you might go visit mom and dad and you don't, you say, oh, well, they were a little forgetful today. But you didn't notice that mom was maybe talking for him or um, helping him through the process. Mm -hmm. Now, as that process gets worse and the disease progresses, um, you could have some behaviors, and a lot of those behaviors we're finding are really related to how we deal with a dementia patient because they're so frustrated and they can't always connect their brain and tell you what it is that they exactly need. Um, I had a, a, a patient and um, he would keep touching people, you know, and they'd be, oh, you know, what is he doing? And, you have to find out what is he doing. He was looking for cigarettes because he was a smoker and he kept his cigarettes in his pocket. Mm -hmm. So we have to always look and see what we can find in terms of the root cause of what the frustration is. But what happens is we get frustrated, we lose patience, and then everybody loses. So um, again, as that disease progresses, we need to put in place different kinds of um, signage, um, things to remind them to do things. Um, and that helps them to, we call it wayfinding. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we will find a patient, we say, oh, you know, they're incontinent. Well, they might not be able to find the bathroom. They may forget where it is. Mm -hmm. So all of those things that we can give them 
to help them through this process, it just increases their quality of life enormously. You know, as you and I sat down a few minutes ago and we talked about, um, you know, still working and still finding a purpose. Well, just because you have Alzheimer's or you have any kind of dementia, you need a purpose. Mm -hmm. You need that purpose to get up. And that's what the goal of Matthew's journey is, using, you know, a Montessori-inspired method of giving you the purpose. Um, I know in the center we have a little map. I have a map on the wall. And many of the clients, they've traveled. They love to talk about their travels. They love to stand and look at the map. And the other day we, we took a train ride through Switzerland. And one of the gentlemen, he was so excited. I was there. Oh, I was there. And, um, you know, our memories are still there. It's mostly our long-term memory. It's the short-term memory that's affected. Yes, yes. And speaking of short-term memory, because many of us, uh, including the viewers and myself, either have family members or friends who are going through this. And a friend who is having problems with short-term memory right now uh, shows her frustration by just stopping and all of a sudden tears come rolling down her cheeks and you know she's very frustrated. Mm -hmm. And by the way, she had been a brilliant yes. woman. Uh, what, is there any relationship uh, between uh, who that person used to be? And I guess the question I'm asking is, uh, do we know the causes of dementia? Well, the same thing that Dr. Alzheimer found in 1947 is basically the same things that we're assigning now is the tangles and the plaques in the brain. And um, you know, Alzheimer's disease cannot be diagnosed until autopsy. Now there are, there are scans and different things that you use to uh, differentiate Alzheimer's from other diseases, but um, it still can only be diagnosed through mm -hmm. uh, autopsy. Right. But we're learning more about it in terms of the frustrations that people are having. Um, you know, like your friend, you might put up signs for her in the house. And we know we use green green signs with a white background for our clients because that's, that's what's worked really well. Um, Montessori's done a lot of research. So... Um, and, you know, there's other things that they're talking about causing, causing, um, oh, I heard something last night on uh, ABC News, and they were talking about, you know, having a good diet and exercise. And, you know, I thought about that for a moment, and I thought, those are the things we do for everything. Mm -hmm. You know, um, we've talked about fluoride. Dr. Alzheimer originally thought it was aluminum because they had started switching to aluminum pans. Mm -hmm. So he thought it might be that. But um, there's still a lot of research that has to be done. But one of the things I realized very quickly is, and the Alzheimer's Association is wonderful with their research and trying to put money into it. But you know what? What do we do every day? You know, we know we're eventually, hopefully, going to have a cure. But what do we do each day to take care of these clients that we have. Right. And speaking of what you do every day, uh, they arrive at what time in the morning do you open? Well, my clients right now, I don't have too many right now, they come around 9, 9.30. Okay. They like to sleep in. Uh huh. And um, the families, uh, one of the wives, she doesn't come back till about 5.30. And I just, I recently met her at the ACME. And they were in front of me online, and I said, oh, how did your day go to the client? And his wife said, I don't know about his day, but my day was great. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it's that relief, right. and the relief to know that they're in an environment. Um, and what Montessori um, we try to do is when you're in the nursing home, you know, someone said, if I go to a nursing home and you make me play bingo, I'm going to have to hit you on the head. <laughs> so, yeah, maybe one day they might enjoy doing that. But, you know, if you, you want to find out what their interests were. What do they like? We have a gentleman that likes rugby. 
And you know what he's doing? He's teaching me about rugby. Oh, interesting. <laughs> I'm like, what are they doing there? <laughs> right, right. Yeah, so that's an interest. Um, and, you know, sometimes I do go into places and I hear that TV on all day long. It drives me crazy. You know, um, I said, do we have to hear the Beatles song mm -hmm. for the thousandth time today? Mm -hmm. So you need to find their interest. If they like to paint, we want to make sure they get some exercise, um, good nutrition through the day. Um, we make sure, you know, they do. They like the little snacks. Mm -hmm. um, so we have snacks for them. And uh, we're recommending people make a memory book. So you know how we look at our phones mm -hmm. and we smile mm -hmm. when we see our grandchildren or a, an event we went to and it brings back a memory. So um, we're encouraging our family members to bring us some photos and let's make a memory book. And that also connects them to there might be in a new place mm -hmm. and they can open that book and then... Right. You know, they could take a sigh and feel good. Right. A video that I viewed in preparation for this interview showed a, a center, which is both residential and day, I guess. And it showed uh, the staff wearing badges so that the uh, individual client uh, could go up and say, hello, Dottie. Uh, they would not have remembered the name, and so you establish the name with a badge. Does your staff do that too? Yeah, I have it, and I left my badge because I ran out. Uh huh. But I, I think of being in an activity, you know, because I still do some nursing homework, and you really not knowing who's sitting next to you. And if you have memory loss, you're not going to remember it. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that goes the very last is reading. So they can read for a very long time. But the video that you watched was, I believe, from Australia. Mm -hmm. And Australia, New Zealand, and England, they are way ahead of us on taking care of their clients and their caregivers um, with dementia. They're way ahead. And I, I was going to ask about that. So you have a uh, client-centered program mm -hmm. uh, that helps them to maintain their dignity and independence for as long as possible. Mm -hmm. And could you tell us some, uh, you've already mentioned some of the activities like the map, uh, but what other activities might you do with them? Well, um, we have, sometimes it's matching up cards you know, to help them. And what you want to do when we're doing activities with them, there's no winning and there's no losing. Okay? It is just doing it. Mm -hmm. And what we do is you try to work with the client to guide them along in the activity. You sit next to them and you're guiding them so they have success. That's what we want. We want success. Mm -hmm. uh, and the cutest thing was I have a, a, client, a patient in a nursing home and we didn't know she knew how to play bing bingo. <laughs> She's 91. <laughs> and she won two games. <laughs> so we were laughing about that. But, uh, you know, and some of them, we have, a, uh, we have people that was a pharmaceutical rep. So we might start talking about drugs or, and I noticed he's very neat. He likes keeping things neat in the center. So I just let him do it. Mm -hmm. Keep mm -hmm. it neat. But things that are of interest to them. And when people come into the center, they'll say, well, we don't see all, all these activities going on. It's because it's what the client wants to do at the moment. I have a little room set up like a men's office um, with a picture of JFK. And someone said to me, I think this looks just like his office at the White House. <laughs> So that familiarity and um, just being successful in what they want to do. Right. You know, presenting different things to them, matching up maybe the birds. Mm -hmm. People like things like that. Sure. And is what kind of training does your staff get? Well, um, Tanya, who's my program manager, has worked with dementia clients for over 15 years. And um, there is a, a woman in the United States. Her name is Jennifer Brush. And Jennifer is a speech uh, therapist, and she's brought the Montessori method to the United States. And she's worked extensively in Europe, Australia, Ireland, and um, we went to her program down in Maryland. 
and the continue with the reading and um, and you ha you have to work one on one with the staff to show them how to uh, present a question to somebody. You have to work with them on how um, to notice. Let's bring them to the restroom right now and. So um, most of the staff will be um, certified nursing assistants mm -hmm. because I find that they work very well with, um, because they're used to taking care of clients in the nursing home and they have a better understanding of, um, you know, their personalities a little bit and what to expect. Mm -hmm. But I think it's important as well with Tanya and I both being nurses that when we do an application, it's important that we know what kind of medications people are on uh, because we're able to to assess what change does this patient may have, a change in condition that someone that's not in the healthcare industry might not be able to figure out. Sure. I had a gentleman yesterday and I had been off a couple of days and I was like, he's just not right, you know, and, and you, you give all the you give the vital signs and you do all that for the doc, but then I call back and I said, no, I think he needs to go out, and he did need to go out. Mm -hmm. So um, rather than wait till the crisis occurs, you know, we can suggest to family members, you might need to go see your physician, or maybe you need to go back to the neurologist, or, mm -hmm. you know, we certainly don't make diagnosis of everybody, anybody, but we are, um, we're trained. Right, right. Now, um, you mentioned uh, the staff training. You mentioned you had a suggestion that uh, either our viewers or myself could could offer about the signs with the white and the green. Uh, what is your relationship to the caregiver at home? Uh, do you mention things to them that might make it easier for them to be the caregiver once the client returns home? That's very important because what our goal is at Matthew's Journey is to work with the caregiver. What can we do? What are we seeing in the center? And what can you do at home that may help? Mm -hmm. uh, whether it's putting signs on the cabinets, putting up um, a sign to go to the restroom, or another one is when a family member may come, they may not remember that family member's name. So to help the family to say, um, instead of, I might say to you, you're, you know, my sister and you come through the door and um, you'll, you might say, oh, hi, Dottie, you know, how are you? I'm not going to remember your name. Mm -hmm. So what I might do is I would tell them how to say, hey, it's Jerry, Dottie, I'm here to see you today. How are you doing? So you gave him the prompt mm -hmm. that that's your name. So now uh, that frustration is gone for him. I see. I yeah. see. Yeah. Yeah, that element of frustration is a, a, an important one uh, for everyone connected with the client to keep in mind. The client has frustration. The caregiver has frustration. And they both need to learn how to deal with those mm -hmm. frustrations. It's, it's a different normal. Yes. It's all it is, a different normal. Right. Nothing more than that. Right. Um, now, uh, how is your uh, facility financially sustained? Well, it's private pay. Mm -hmm. That's what we're doing right now. And um, I'm taking care of it. Right. Okay. <laughs> and do you think you'll uh, attach a research component to it at some point? Well... I would like to, and I follow Jennifer Brush, and uh, she's working now with the Alzheimer Association, and um, yeah, I would hope. In fact, the, I was talking with my uh, program director, Tanya, and we were talking about, um, you know, things that we see with clients, and um, interesting, as you and I were talking, you said you have this brilliant woman, and and um, these clients are brilliant also. And uh, so it's it's interesting to watch, to mm -hmm. see. And I said to her, I think we should start taking some nice notes, you know, on what we're seeing and what the response is and what we're getting in more positive ways so that we can participate in some way 
to the advancement of caring for patients with dementia. Absolutely. And as our society uh, needs more places like Matthew's Journey, uh, we would hope that if you have any questions, that you contact Dottie Katz directly at Matthew's Journey, which is located in Paoli. Dottie, thank you so much for coming. It was a pleasure oh, chatting Jerry, with you. Oh, Jerry, I so enjoyed it. Thank, thank you, you so much. Sure.